Let's review how to solve some simple linear differential equations. I'm sure you've seen these methods before in your previous classes, and they're basically two steps that we're going to use. One is solving for what we call the homogeneous solution, where we set the input, the right-hand side to the equation, to zero. And then the second step is to find the particular solution where we're going to put the inputs back in. For the homogeneous solution, uh, there's something we call the characteristic equation, where each derivative in our system we're actually just going to replace with the variable s. And then the homogeneous solution is going to be a sum of exponentials using these s's that we've solved for. In the case of the particular solution, the trick that we use is knowledge that the waveform of our solution is generally going to look a lot like the input. And so we have some template forms for th that waveform. We're going to use the differential equation and plug that waveform back in in order to solve for any unknown variables. Now this may or may not seem familiar, so I think the easiest thing to do is just to illustrate all of this with some examples. So let's do that with a simple first order differential equation where we have 2x dot minus x is equal to the unit step function 1 of t with an initial condition that's given to us. And if you recall, the first step is to find the homogeneous solution where we treat the input as zero for the time being and we replace the derivatives with s. So this is a first derivative we're going to replace it with s to the 1 power. And then this is a constant, which is zero derivatives. You could either treat it as s to the 0, or anything raised to the 0th power is just 1. So what we end up with is the characteristic equation 2s minus 1 is equal to 0. That's our characteristic equation. And we, when we solve for that, we end up with s is equal to 1 half. The homogeneous solution is of the form, uh, it's a sum of a bunch of exponentials, and it's going to be some constant times e to the st, and then there are going to be more terms like this, same kind of terms, if you had uh, more equations. In this case, we only have one s, so what we end up with is a e to the one-half t, where uh, the variable a is going to remain unknown for now. So a is unknown uh, until later when we're going to solve for it using the initial conditions. Let's now move on to the particular solution, which is a separate series of steps. We have a particular solution and it's going to have a form that's similar to the waveform of our input. If you recall, our input is 1, and so that tells us that we're looking for a waveform which is also a constant, just like 1 is. And so we're going to start off with x of p is equal to uh, uh, our constant c, where this is also unknown. And the way we solve for it is we're going to plug this back into the differential equation. So let's do that. We have 2xp dot minus xp is equal to 1. That's what I mean by plugging the particular solution back into our differential equation up above, including the inputs. Now c is a constant, so xp dot is going to be 0, whereas uh, we're going to be stuck with xp, so we end up with negative c is equal to 1, which then means that c is equal to negative 1. So now we have our homogeneous and particular solutions. We add these together to form the general solution, uh, which is going to be these two parts together. So we end up with a e to the 1 half t minus 1 as our general solution for x of t, except we still don't know what a is. And the way we're going to solve for that is we're going to use the initial conditions to solve for a. So let's notice that we have our initial condition given above. 
x of 0 should be equal to 5. But if you plug x of 0 into our equation here, what we end up is a e to the 1 half times 0 minus 1. e to the 0 is just going to be 1, so we end up with a minus 1. And this has to be equal to our uh, initial condition up here, 5. So I'm going to write in a 5 here for the initial condition. And then the solution, of course, is just going to be a is equal to 6. So now we know everything. We know that x of t is going to be equal to 6 e to the 1 half t minus 1. That, there's our solution. Now, how do we know whether our solution is right? Well, we can always check. And why don't we do that over here? Let's check our solution. 6 e to the minus uh, e to the 1 half t minus 1. We can actually plug back in 2 times x dot minus x. So here's the 2. 2 times the derivative of 6 e to the 1 half t we're going to need. So that's going to be 3 e to the 1 half t. Uh, the 1 uh, has a derivative of 0, so that's all we end up with for x dot. And then for x, we just have the uh, 6, the entire uh, quantity, 6 e to the 1 half t minus 1. So if we put these together, 2 times 3 is 6. You end up with the 6s are going to cancel out. 6 minus 6 e to the 1 half t. I'm just collecting the 1 half t terms. Uh, plus, our, there's a one constant term left here, which is minus minus 1, which leaves us with a plus 1. So if you put this all together, you end up with x 2x dot minus x is equal to 0, plus 1, which gives us 1. And then notice up above that the right-hand side for our equation was indeed 1. So that verifies that our uh, solution actually works. In addition, we can check the initial conditions. Uh, again, just to be sure. So let's plug in x of 0 is equal to 6e to the 1 half times 0 plus 1. And of course, you end up with, uh, sorry, minus 1. That should be a minus sign. And of course, when you plug in uh, t equals 0, you end up with 5, meaning that we did satisfy our initial conditions. So we did two things. We solved for the whole thing and we plugged it back into the differential equation to show that it worked, and we solved for the initial condition and just made sure that it worked as well. So we're done here. One thing I should mention is I should say that when we solve this differential equation that to be perfectly fair, we should say that this solution is correct for t greater than or equal to zero, and basically we don't care nor do we know what necessarily happens for t before zero, we only know an initial condition uh, that's given to us, and uh, also our input, 1 of t, uh, only applies for time greater than or equal to 0. So that's our first example of solving a differential equation.